something very deep that goes on in the souls and the spirit spirits of the people that are seeking for the truth, for the Creator, for the real meaning of life. And many people experiencing it in different ways, but from my life experience, what that I saw, what that I felt, people that I met through the years. So most of the people that really take that decision to look for Hashem and to find Him and to serve Him, to commit themselves to Him, are people that are coming from a point of truth of simplicity. They're realizing, okay, there is Hashem and Hashem gave the Torah and now I want to come closer to Him. And people from that search are moving very fast to keep Torah and mitzvot and they become religious. And in a way they're losing their way by doing that. And then it's a big challenge, it's a big question. Because I do believe that the Torah is truth and people do believe that the Torah is real and the Torah is what that we received from heaven and we want to keep it. But after a while of keeping Torah and mitzvot suddenly you can find yourself in a struggle because you feel that you lost the spiritual connection that you had in the early days. In the beginning of your process of become spiritual and finding an inner connection to the Creator. And many people are finding themselves keeping Torah and mitzvot like that it's written, mitzvot anashim melumada, out of habit, they're from, from, from habit, they're just keeping Torah every day, go to shul, go to mikveh, learn Torah, dafayomi, keeping halachot, shomer shabbat, eating kasher, chalav Israel, whatever. Depends in the place, in, in the environment, in, in how strong he was in the beginning when he pushed himself tov tov into Judaism, deep deep into, into, the, into the rules and the guidings of, of the holy books, of the rabbis, of, of communities. But those people, in a way, after a while, losing their connection the feeling of being connected to what did they do. And that's a very dangerous process because then those people can find themselves questioning on Torah, on Hashem. Maybe I was wrong, maybe the Torah is not real. And we don't have a doubt that the Torah is real and that Hashem is with us. So how can it be that by keeping Torah and mitzvot you lose the connection. You get used to do things that in the beginning you were just dreaming to keep and now you're able to do it and every day you do something that once you were just hoping and dreaming and yearning, maybe, hopefully, one day and today it's in your pocket already and you walk with it and use it, it's part of your tools, it's, it's part of your weapon, you, you know how to use it, it's, it's yours, it's installed already. But you don't receive the energy and the happiness and the joy from keeping it like that you were from silly things five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. You were much more spiritual or at least felt spiritual when you were far away than today where you're so close. So that conflict, that situation breaks the back of of many camels. Many, many people are, are falling and, and losing their happiness and their joy and after a while also their faith and also their confidence in who that they are and in what that they wanted to accomplish from life, in life. And it's a dangerous process. So 
there are some advice that I can share with you today and I will do my best to serve it in a, in a simple way for everyone to understand what is the solution and how we can win and and achieve the goal that really we've been sent to achieve. Really to be close to Hashem while keeping Torah and Mitzvot and not only to do it as a custom, as a minhag, as a habit, as, 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 a, as a need or as a result of a certain fear or something like that. We want to serve Hashem out of love. We want to find a way how to feel the love, to feel the passion of connecting yourself to something that is divine, that is so beyond all physicality and all limitations of this world, all constrictions, measures, sizes, weights, something that is deep, that is meaningful, to have a purpose in life. From what that I saw and experienced in life, so when you are disconnected from yourself, so no matter what you have, you can't feel it. A person can dream to get married with another person, with his wife, with her husband, and she can dream on that and she can pray for that for years and then finally really to get married and it will be the most beautiful day of her life, of his life and it's going to be a fantastic wedding. And after three years suddenly you look back and you say, that's not the man that I wanted to live with, that's not the wife that I wanted to live with, so how can it be? What, you were so wrong in those days, you are so stupid, so far, it can't be. You knew what you found in that person, why today you can't find it anymore? Why today it doesn't happen anymore? Because you're disconnected, because you're not talking enough from justified reasons maybe. Something happened, some things created, some cold, some rejection, some stress, some fear, some trauma. Things happened and separated you in a way that now it's hard for you to communicate and to meet each other. So maybe it's not her, so maybe it's not him. No, it's her, it's him, but you're not in touch. Exactly the same is happening to the person with the Torah, with Hashem, with that process of coming closer to Hashem. And in a certain moment of your tshuva, you lose the connection with Hashem because of some kind of disappointment, some kinds of fear, some kind of stress that you went through in life and you lose the touch, you lose the relationship and then after a while you question, maybe it's not him, maybe it was all wrong, maybe it was all a mistake. No, it was not a mistake, just you lost the connection, the way of communication that was very simple for you in the beginning. When you don't, you don't need to teach a child to cry when, when he's in pain or when he's hungry. You don't need to teach him that. It's a natural thing that he does. Every simple animal knows how to cry to call her mother to come and rescue her in time of trouble, of struggle, in time of need. In the beginning of our tshuva, it was very simple to look to heaven and, and, and to call Hashem and to scream and to cry or, or to feel and to understand that you understand or to accept your understandings as real. But with that process of getting wiser and learning more rules and more halachot and hearing more opinions of more people, we lost our self-confidence in ourselves to count on ourselves to continue the process of tshuva as we understand that we should come closer to Hashem. And we gave up on our own unique way of serving Hashem and we dropped it off and we let other people to lead us and to take us to achieve their dreams, their hopes, their understandings. 
By doing that and let someone else drive you, you lose the opportunity to accomplish the mission that you've been sent to accomplish. To find your own destiny, your own purpose in life. To become who that you really are. Why? Because you're following someone else's dreams. You're following someone else's guidings. So we're going to ask, but there are rabbis, there are wiser people with more life experience and if I'm not going to follow them, so what am I doing here? In all of that traditional Judaism, you must follow the rabbis, you must follow the Chachamim. But you cannot ignore your heart. You should follow the righteous ones that you meet, that you realize that they are righteous. But you cannot ignore yourself, your true self, who the Hashem made you to be during that process of trying to learn and to accept. Means that if you heard something and that thing doesn't fit 100%, you cannot accept it and to force yourself to keep it. Because then you're going to break your vessel. You're going to break your ability to attach to that second link, to that second level of your developing process of coming closer to Hashem. Because you forced it and you pushed it too hard. So okay, you heard a certain halakha, a certain rule, you really desire to keep it, but it doesn't fit yet, so you need to work on yourself until you will be able to do it with a smile on your face and not only your face, your wife's face, your family's face, your friends, your children. And until you will reach that level, you're not ready. And if you're going to do things when you're not ready, you can just destroy and break things that if you will just going to wait another week or another month or another year, everything will be perfect. And when you will have that next vessel, that next ability, you will enjoy things that you cannot even dream that exist at all. But our fear from lack of success, our lack of confidence, lack of faith in ourselves, is shaking our self-esteem and destroy our happiness and forcing us to follow other people's advice and to lose our connection, our individual connection, the only real connection that we have with our Creator. That it's a spiritual relationship that goes through our souls. And we lose the spiritual connection and we're trying to build a connection that will be built and lean on physical Torah mitzvot. I'll wake up every morning and by that I'm going to fulfill my obligation to the Creator. I'm going to wash my hands every morning and before eating bread and by that Hashem will not be upset at me. Why? Because you heard some rabbi that said that if you don't wash your hands Hashem is angry. So now it came into your mind and you said, okay, do I want Hashem to be angry on me? No, for sure not. So I'm going to wash my hands. It's a quick solution. But really it doesn't help. Not that it doesn't help, not that it doesn't help to wash your hands. It just doesn't help to do it out of fear. It won't bring you to the spiritual potential that is hidden in Nesilat Yadayim, in washing your hands, when you're going to do that out of stress, out of fear, not to be punished have to fulfill my obligation to be a Yedechovah, that no one will think that I'm not going to touch, that nothing going to happen, that I'm not going to have to throw that bread away because I touched it with my impure hands, I'm so impure. Relax. When did your tshuva process started? When Hashem Barach revealed His kindness on us as a nation? When we were in 49 gates of Tumah, of contamination in Egypt, the lowest, darkest, most contaminated place in the world, when we were slaves and our mind was not in the right place, we were so far, and then Hashem started to reveal His kindness on us and start open His heart to us and show His unconditional love to us. When He woke me up, when I was in the lowest place in my life, 
That's when he started to reveal his loving kindness on me. Not after five years of tshuva, when I was already in the Beit Midrash, learning, opening books, Shulchan Aruch, and finishing one Masechta of Gemara after the next, and waking up early and davening nets, and going to the Mikveh and keeping Shabbat, and Motzi Shabbat in time of Rabbeinu Ta. Not in those days Hashem started to reveal His light to me. Only when I was still drinking and eating with filthy hands and when I was partying in Shabbos, Friday nights, when I was dancing and drinking alcohol, when I was dating with women, in those days Hashem Barach decided to reveal to me the fact that He exists, His real existence. So, from that I'm learning that His love to me is an unconditional love is a love that is not depends in my actions. It doesn't mean that I don't need to follow His commandments, His advice, His rules. I must, but I must do it with the same love and appreciation that I had in the earliest days when I was going to a spring, to a lake, and I was so happy, and I didn't have a clue what am I doing. And I was so inspired and I felt so close. I remember the first times that I was putting tefillin on my head, I was crying. I was so excited. I was so thrilled. I felt like I'm the luckiest person in the world. And after 10 years, suddenly, it's a burden. It's a punishment. Yeah, but I have to put tefillin first. Yeah, but I have to put tefillin. Oh, what's going on? It's the same tefillin. Maybe even a better pair, because you bought a second pair. Okay, great, so why aren't you happy? Because you lost your truth. You start following people instead of following Hashem. Where did you find Hashem in the beginning? In a book or in your heart? You read about Him in a book, yes. You heard about Him from some rabbi, from some person, from some religious friend, yes. Something from the outside world shown to you something, but where you felt the truth of that thing, the inner connection, the desire to join to that thing, where you felt it in your heart. And you followed your heart to read another page from that book or to buy another book of the same author or from the same concept, same issue, same subject or to go to another lecture, or to hear another person, or to open another discussion, or to search or to think about those things that you never thought about before. Because you were following your heart, you found Hashem. You never searched for Hashem when you found Him. Hashem revealed Himself to you when you were searching for the truth. Hashem and the truth is one thing. I was not looking for Hashem when I found Him. I was looking for my quiet. I was looking for my truth. I wanted to stop lying to myself. I wanted to be an honest person. I wanted to succeed in life. I wanted to be happy. And then I found Hashem. Because Hashem decided to show me that He is the source of health, that He is the source of happiness. So He revealed to me his presence, His Havaya, His being. So today why I feel sometimes that I lost the connection? Because I'm not following my heart anymore. Only because that I'm now counting like I used to 15 or 20 years ago to follow other people. Oh, are you coming today to the pub, to the, to the, to the club, or you do you want to go to the beach? Everyone are going, so I'm going to go with them. Today everyone are going to shul, so I'm going to go with them. So maybe it's better to go to shul than to go to the beach. I don't know. Maybe. You can say. I'm not sure. But for sure that if I'm not following Hashem to the shul, something is wrong. And if back then I was not following Hashem, so it sounds equal. It sounds the same for me. You think that you cause less damage in shul than you cause in the beach? I'm not sure. It doesn't written that you're not allowed to talk an empty conversation in the beach, like just random things to talk. 
But in a synagogue if you just talk your own nonsense, so something is wrong with that. There is a rule that you're not supposed to do it. So if you're not able to keep your mouth quiet in shul, you need to think about if it's good to go or maybe it's not good to go. Maybe you need to solve some questions. What brings you to talk so much in shul? It doesn't mean, okay, you know what, that's an excuse. You know what, I'm not able not to talk in shul, so I'm not going to go to shul. No, oh, Rav Dror said, I can know Rav Dror said. No, no, that's an excuse. You found for yourself an excuse why not to go to shul. I tell you, go to Hashem and ask Him, what's going on with me, Ribbono Shel Olam, that I cannot close my mouth in the minute that I find myself in shul. Why I'm talking all of the time, Ribbono Shel Olam? I'm not saying go and talk or don't go because you talk. I say solve your problems with Hashem and then go with a happy heart and a wishing soul. But don't lie to yourself that everything is okay because you go to shul. Because nothing is okay. Shul doesn't solve your problems. Hashem will solve your problems only when you will be in touch with Him. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. As long as you're not calling him with truth, it's hard to find. It's hard to find the answers from him. He's answering the ones that are calling him from their hearts with a pure intention. What's a pure intention? I can find myself and question my purity. Maybe I'm not pure, so maybe Hashem not going to answer. The Creator, He wants your heart. He wants your honesty. He doesn't need you to be not a genius and not a righteous person. He needs you just to want Him, to want to come closer to the truth. And the truth will bring you one step after the other closer and closer to Him. And sometimes you need to go in the opposite direction to find the truth. For an example, you want to go to Jerusalem. Great, wonderful. If you check on the map, Jerusalem is over there. Perfect, great, so I'll walk in that direction. You think I'm going to make it? No. If I really want to go to Jerusalem, I need to take the right way, and then to take the first left, and then again to the right in the second turn, and then I need to go another left, and then I need to go all the way and to circle that neighborhood, and then I need to go to the ha I can forget very easily that my direction is Jerusalem, but it depends on your will. Sometimes if you want to get to Jerusalem, you need to have many, many left and right, up and downs, and that's the path that will bring you to Jerusalem. Mountains surrounding Jerusalem, so you must go through those up and downs and right and left to meet the holy place of Jerusalem. So when you want to find Hashem, when you want to complete your faith, when you want to have a complete faith in the Creator to be in touch with Him from inside spiritually. So you must to go through all of your up and downs because you must meet yourself. And you're sometimes up and you're sometimes down. And you're sometimes right and you're sometimes left and wrong. And you need to find yourself when you're right and when you're wrong that you will be able to fix. You need to be happy in your good points and you need to be aware to your lackings and to fix them, to work on them. So you must meet yourself. But if always you're avoiding because you're too scared to find out who you really are and what is hidden over there, so you will never going to find the truth. The search for the truth will make you stand in front of many embarrassing things about yourself that it will be a struggle to deal with. But when you're going to deal with those things and you're going to accept them and you're going to accept yourself and you're going to talk to yourself about your lackings, you will be healed from all of those pain and sorrow that you carry inside of yourself. Before you deal with who that you really are, you're not aware to yourself. It calls chasar da'at. Your lack of knowledge, you don't know yourself, you don't know who you are. You don't have self-awareness so you cannot know Hashem. The word Da'at, that it means wisdom and knowledge, to know Hashem, it's the first letters of those three important words. Da'at Tamid. 
you should know yourself always. Then you will have Da'at Elyon. Then you can know Hashem. Only when you're going to know yourself because you are the tool that God gave your soul to meet Him through. Only through yourself, through your own eyes, through your own ears, through your own nose, through your own hands, through your own heart, your own mind, your own legs, your body, all of your being, your character, your attributes, your moods. Only through that you can sense the Creator. Those are the sensors that God gave you. Those are the tools and the weapon that God gave you for that mission to know Him and to recognize Him, the Creator. That's our mission. You need to know Him. So for that, you need to know yourself. Because if you found yourself now in the battlefield, and you're a soldier, and you have a weapon, but you don't remember for which side you're fighting, who am I? I'm part of which unit, of, of who is my commander, what's our mission? If you lost your memory, you're out of the battle. You cannot fight anymore. If you don't have a purpose, if you don't know exactly who you need to shoot, who, which targets you need to attack, what you need to accomplish, you're not able to function, you're not able to fight. You will never going to reach your destiny. You will never become the one that you need to be. You have to have your mind with you. So for that, the main thing that we need to work all of our time, all of our life, is our memory. Who am I and what's my purpose? And that will connect you to Hashem with joy, with happiness. If there is a person that wants to learn Torah, that he wants to keep all Torah and mitzvot, but now the family found itself in a situation that they owe so much money, the tuition of the children is so high, they need to pay so many bills and it's just getting harder and harder and the husband realized that he doesn't have more time to sit and learn every day like he used to before and now he needs to work an extra 4, 5, 14 hours a day and he doesn't have a choice. So. Does it mean sadness, depression, completely to be lost and, and despair and to lose all hope? Or that that person can be strong and powerful and happy to go to the next mission in life and to make sure that his family will be stable and happy and the children always will have food and nice clothes and they will pay the mortgage, crazy mortgage and all the expenses what would you choose? For sure that to take responsibility on life and to deal with the challenges will be a higher level than to fall to despair and sadness. But I'm not learning. Maybe it's not your time to learn. Maybe if you're not going to learn right now and you're going to stand in that test, maybe you will reach a level that you cannot reach without learning, without working. Maybe something is calling you in that place and also humility is required for you to accomplish. So we just need to understand that if we're going to forget Hashem, even while keeping Torah and Mitzvot, we're going to lose our way. And really to be in touch with Hashem, it depends on the intention of your heart. Because where is Hashem? Is Hashem in Shul? Is Hashem in the Beit Midrash? Is Hashem in Jerusalem? In the Temple? Where is Hashem? Here he is. Hashem is here. Okay, but I'm not keeping Torah and Mitzvot. So what? You think that Hashem left? How can Hashem left? How can Hashem leave? How can Hashem disappear? If He is endless and He's filling all of the worlds, and late Atar Panui Mine, there is no place that is empty from Hashem's presence. So how can I find myself without Hashem? Only when I forget Him. But if I remember Him, even if I'm walking in the valley of death, so Hashem is with me. And even if I'm finding myself in rock bottom of hell, 
Hashem is with me. Because here you are. Because you're everywhere. Because there is nothing except of you. And not milvado. And melokol aretz kevado. And he's here with me. So if he's here with me, so what's my problem? If now you're a loyal soldier and your commander sent you to a secret mission and you need to change your outfit and you need to change the way you dress and you need to, to, to hide yourself and to, to dress like a foreign person and act like someone totally else and that's your mission. It doesn't mean that you're not part of the army. You're just in a secret mission. So if now Hashem told you, no more Torah for you for now. No more minyan for you for now. No more kashrut for you for now. I need you to go and fight for our lives. I need you over there. I need you to go and work day and night over there. And there I need you to remember me and our secret mission together. Go be a good soldier. There is only one thing you can do. To remember him in every step of the way. And not to forget him. And Hashem works in mysterious ways, in deep ways, in hidden ways. Because if Hashem would told, tell us everything, we wouldn't follow Him. If Hashem would have told you the difficulty that you're going to go through, you're too lazy to follow, you wouldn't follow. He had to attempt you and to arouse you and to offer you things that you will say, Wow, it's going to be so inspiring, it's going to be so fantastic. And then you find yourself work and sweat, hard labor. But it's part of your mission and you must go through that path. It's like your child that you cannot shower him without promising him a cookie in the end of the shower. Why? Because he's a child and his mind is small. So you must offer him something but it's important and it's not a lie because he must take a shower with no connection to the cookie. He must stay clean and you must work. And you must do things that are required for your personality. To fix yourself, to work on yourself, to become who that you are, to meet the people that you need to meet in life. Because there is a line and you have to meet all of them. And they're over there. So you must go. And you're going to go. If you will want, you will go. And if you will refuse, Hashem will take you there. Because you must meet those people and it's much more important than your satisfaction and your excitement and your pleasure and your joy. There are things that are much more important, like take responsibility, being humble, being nice, being generous, being kind, being loyal, truthful, polite. The way of the land, Derech Eretz, are things that are more important, much more important than all of the rest. Because you cannot achieve the rest before you have the foundations of Judaism. Before you have the basic power of being righteous, of being pure, of being humble, of being nice, being friendly, smiling to people, being happy to see the success of other people, succeeding, growing, wild, even if you're losing, even if you're struggling, what's the connection? So you're struggling, that's your story, but they're succeeding, great! Why you need to be depressed because they're succeeding? What's the connection? Are they eating your food? Are they drinking your water? Hashem supplies to them and Hashem will supply to you. You have your own relationship with Him. And if you have a problem with Him, go solve your problem. That neighbor, that friend is not the one to blame that you're a sufferer. You're a sufferer, okay, let's solve it. We can also talk about why you suffer. It's not always those horrible punishments that people are talking about. Oh, you're suffering because of your sins. I'm suffering because of our sins. Not at all. When Hashem Barak decides to punish someone, that person will be rejected from serving Hashem. Hashem will hide his face from him. But I found myself, after the worst failures that I went through in my life, only coming closer to Him. I was so humbled my, my, by my failures that I realized I must come closer to Him. I must grow. I must try to fix myself. So it's not a punishment. It was a reward. I felt that I was suffering 
so easily, very fast, I interpret that sorrow and that pain as punishment. Why? Because I'm so used to think like that, that when you suffer it means punishment. And when you enjoy it means a reward. But if you see that some sorrow is bringing you closer to your own purpose in life, that if you're going to work hard, you're going to buy that house finally, that if you're going to learn so much Torah, in the end you will know it and you will be able to keep it, that if you will speak enough to your wife, you will have peace and then you'll have harmony and love and joy and satisfaction together. So it's worthy for you to put that effort into that business because in the end you will be rewarded. So Yaakov Avinu, he worked seven years for his second wife, Rachel, and it felt for him like it was only a few days. Why? Because in his heart, in his mind, the love for his wife, Rachel, was so important that he couldn't feel the effort. He didn't care about the effort. He had a purpose. He wanted to live with his wife, with his beloved wife, so much that he couldn't care less about the sorrow. When you have a purpose in life, so the difficulties are not punishments anymore. It's only your path of coming closer to your own purpose, to become one with Hashem, to accept on yourself yoke of heaven with a smile, and not as a labor, not as a punishment. If to serve Hashem it's punishment, so you're crazy if you're doing that. I'm not doing that. I haven't received no punishment to serve Hashem. It cannot be punishment for me. If it's a punishment, so that's what you go and do? Okay, I want to be punished today. What's your offering? No. Crazy. The answer is yes, you are crazy. That's where you're doing it. And so I came now today to take you out of that. So please listen carefully and try to break your chains from that fake way of serving Hashem and try really to connect yourself back from your heart and not through other people's guidings because there is Hashem in the world and Hashem is with you and Hashem he cares about you and He loves you and He wants to reveal His love to you. So you just need to talk to Him about whatever you go through and you must do that with an open heart, with a wishing heart with a desiring heart for the truth. And the way to do it is only through a simple, simple conversation with the Creator. Just to talk to Him like you talk to your best friend. To tell Him, I don't have the power to deal with my difficulties, with my weaknesses. It's too hard. The stress is killing me. I need a lifeline, I need your hand, I need a hug, I need your friendship, I need to, to feel your warmth, I need to see a miracle in this situation. You must reveal your face. You cannot let it go on like that. And if that's your honest conversation, that's what you need to go and do with Hashem. And based on that, to have a relationship with Him. Because if in your situation with Hashem you cannot even express your sorrow and your pain, so you don't have no relationship. You're not in touch with Him. He is who that He is and you are who that you are and that's it and you're separated. He's doing His thing in His world and you need to do your thing in your world and that's it. Divorced. That's not unity. Unity with Hashem is to feel close to Hashem. Now let's say that you have two friends. One is not such a good friend and one is your best friend. For years you're together. Now both of them made the same wrong thing to you. You had a meeting with both of them. Both of them didn't show up. And you found yourself disappointed from both of them. Who from those two friends will hear more rebukes from you and insultings from you from both of those friends? I assume 
that the one that you like more, your better friend, he will hear more from you. You're going to hurt him more because you're disappointed from him more because actually you're expecting from him more to be there for you than the other one. So the fact that Hashem Barach is close to you is bringing you to that place that Hashem needs to hear more and more from you how far you feel from Him. A righteous man all day long will complain to Hashem and will cry to Hashem and will tell Hashem exactly what he feels and what he's lack of only because that he feels that Hashem really cares about him. You're going to say, what? All day long he's complaining? All day long he's crying? It's a result of the relationship and the connection. Your wife will rebuke you and going to insult you and going to tell you exactly what she thinks only because that she counts on you more than anyone else that in the end you will hear her that you care about her thoughts and her emotions. So she will reveal it to you. She's not throwing your garbage on you. You're the only one that cares about her and she feels it, that she feels that she can speak with you and share her heart with you. So she's revealing her pain and her sorrow to you. It doesn't mean that she's hurting you. You're just the only person that she can express her sorrow to. So you cannot let yourself be insulted from her rebukes. You should take them as a compliment. If she chose you to tell you what she feels, it means that she's counting on you. That something is going on between you that she feels that she can build herself with you. And if she will stop talking to you, so then you're in a problem. In that time you need to be worried. And it's similar to our relationship with Hashem. When you feel close to Hashem and you feel pain and you feel sorrow and you feel lost and you don't know what to do with yourself, so in that situation, you, if you're really close to Hashem, need to say it all. To open all of your heart and to express all of your sorrow and to reveal all of your heart and all of your doubts, and all of your confusions, and all of your darkness, and all of your sorrow, and your sadness, and your depression, and your lack of hope. Only if you count on Hashem, you can reveal your doubts and solve them. But if you're not counting on Hashem, so you can never talk about your doubts, and you must to act perfect, like everything is great, like you're going to say to that friend, no, it's okay, it doesn't matter. I managed. Why are you going to tell him that? Because who is he that you're going to start telling him what you went through in that night? He's just a clown for you. You don't care. You know that he doesn't care. So there's no one to talk to you, so you're not gonna. But if you would be a good friend, you would tell him everything. That you can believe that he did it to you. That's what you need to say to Hashem. I can't believe that you did that to me. I'm so disappointed. I'm losing my mind. What in the world were you thinking to yourself, throwing me like that in the darkness, Hashem? What's going on? If really for you there is Hashem in the world, and now you cannot talk to Him because He's so high, so what's your connection? I don't get that. It's wrong. That's fake religion. That's not the holy Judaism that we're talking about. That's not the real connection to Father in Heaven that you can be called Yisrael, Yeshar Kel, you and Hashem are one. You cannot do that. If you're not in touch with Him, if you're not praying, if you're not talking, not davening, talking to Him like you talk to your best friend. Not holding a sitter and reading from the book, letters that have been printed on that book, no. Conversation, opening your heart, telling him I'm so lost, I need your help, I don't know what to do with myself. Trying to succeed, putting all of my power 
and losing things and, 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 and failing again and losing my way and falling to sadness and can't find hope and don't have an advice and don't know how to answer someone else's questions. Okay, if that's your truth on that you need to talk. And when you will be honest enough to open your heart and to tell Hashem what you feel, Hashem will reveal His loving kindness on you, the love that is not depending on your actions and He will heal you and He will redeem you and He will give you the advice. Because the Creator, Yahiv Chochmah He gives the wisdom to the wise. And how are you going to show your wisdom? If you lack of knowledge and you want to learn, so which wisdom you sh should reveal? Ezeu Chacham, who is the wise person, the one that is ready to learn from every person, he is a wise person. A wise person is a humble person that understands and realizes that he needs help and he's wise enough to go and to admit, I need help, I don't have an advice, I don't know what to do. And he's checking and thinking and searching and sending his questions to Rabbi Google to find some advice and in the end he will find it. You know how many converts Rabbi Google brought back to borders of Kedusha? Only why? Because they were searching and they found the answers. You know how many converts, how many Baalei Tshuva? only because that they were searching the truth so they could find the truth even in Google, even in YouTube, even in Facebook. In the darkest places of them all you can find Hashem. In the most impure places in the world that contains the most horrifying content you can find Hashem. Why? Because He's everywhere and He will reveal Himself to everyone that will look for Him with a pure intention, with a pure will to find the truth. Remember the earliest days how Hashem Barach took you out of your own Egypt, how He revealed His light on you when you were broken and poor and sad and depressed. And remember those miracles? To learn from them that when you needed Him, He helped you means that if you will need Him today, He will help you. So why is not helping me? Because you're not as honest and humble as you were 10 years ago. But you got wiser. You finished to Masechtot, you learned Shulchan Aruch, you finished the Seder in Mishnah Brura. You keep Shabbat, you eat kasher, you don't drink anything, Chalab Israel only. So it went up to your head and you think that you're someone. So you lost your connection to the Creator that He's the only one. But if you will bring yourself back to humility, to remember everything that I have I received as a free gift, as a result of His loving kindness, His endless love to me, so you will never go lost. You will never lose your connection with Him and He will answer to all of your prayers. But only as long as you pray. You cannot answer your prayers while you're not praying. You must pray your own pray, prayer. You must pray the th on the things that you need, on the things that are really important to you. Only those things can bring you to real happiness. If you will fake your path and you will try to show off to some other people that you're holding in a higher level, in some I don't know what, and in your prayers you will pray on divine things, on amazing concepts that you heard of, Kabbalah, please Hashem, shine the light of Zeir Anpin on me that I will receive the your light panim be panim, that, I'm, uh, that, uh, that I'll, my sheep will be similar to your sheep, that I'll become one with you. And you don't have that intention, you don't understand what in the world you're talking about. So even if you will receive it, probably you won't, but even if you will receive it, 
it won't satisfy you because you really need a house now and you really need to have money to buy things for Shabbos and you really need to take your family for a vacation now because it's summer and you really need to change your car and whatever. So if that's really where you're holding, so what do you have to do in other places that are not really yours, that it's not really you? Those prayers cannot be answered and even if they will be answered, you won't be able to enjoy them. Why? Because you're not there. The bounty will go to that place, but you're stuck here on your sofa, in your house, with your wife and children, and you don't have money for gas. So, you won't experience all of those things that you hope to receive, because they're not belong to you. So it's much better to be humble and to say to Hashem in Bach, listen, bottom line, I need cash, I need money, I need some help, I need some, some advice. I don't know how to make my wife happy. I don't know how to solve that issue in school of my children. I need some advice. I need some guiding. I need a miracle here, Hashem. If that's your heart and you will talk about it, you will be answered. But as long as you're lying to yourself and making up stories to yourself and trying to climb by yourself to achieve things that someone else told you that he experienced, you're not going to develop. It's better for us all to make one step after the other and to climb and to grow and to keep ourselves stable and happy and healthy and proud of ourselves and to feel complete with ourselves and always to feel connected and always to feel that there is someone that listens to our prayers and to talk to him it's the easiest thing in the world. And the Yatsara is trying to reject us from every holy thing and he will tell you, no, what now, you need to go and talk for an hour, what you gonna do? You don't need to do an hour. Start with one minute. Open your door, go to your front lawn, stand in the entrance to your house, don't get inside your house right away, wait for one second in the car, stop in the red traffic light, wait, on your way to, to I don't know where, you're stuck in traffic, you're in the subway, you're in the, 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 I don't know, in the highway stuck. Now, talk to Hashem from your heart. Don't try to become someone else. Just open your mouth and say to Him, Hi, how are you? Long time no see. How are you doing? I'm suffering. I need your help. I feel like I'm talking to myself right now. In this generation it's okay. Everyone with the Bluetooth is speaking to themselves. So no one will feel that you're weird. Like everyone are talking to themselves in their cars. So it's okay. Hashem, but I feel that I'm talking to myself. Do you really hear my prayer? Really, if I'm going to ask you for something, you're going to give it to me, you're going to answer my request. Really, Hashem, does it really work like that? If you will try that, you will be answered. Because Hashem Barach is telling us, test me, check me on that one. That when you will pray for something, that I will answer you. He will open the sky to answer your requests and your will and to give you what that your heart desire. But you need to be connected to your heart that your prayer will be answered. So your effort should be our effort, my effort should be to find my own heart and to understand who in the world I am. Who I am? Who am I? Why do I have those hobbies? Why do I have those talents? Why do I have those abilities? Why Hashem gave me that kind of memory? Why Hashem gave me that kind of sense of humor? Why Hashem Bach gave me that amount of money? Why Hashem Bach gave me that cow? Why those are my children? Why that is my wife? Why I live here? Why I live there? Who am I? Why I had to go through this high school? Why I had to go through the army? Why I had to go... The, why? Why they were my friends? What did it give me? Who am I? Now with that I that you will find, with that you need to serve Him. Okay, so that's me. 
Now you have a, 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 a broken car and you need to make it to Vegas, so it's going to take you two weeks to drive. You don't have money to buy a ticket and to fly in four hours to be there, but you still need to make it. So two weeks, many gas stations, maybe garage, maybe who knows what will happen. Nice friends will help you along the way to fix your car again and to, to okay, maybe. But in two weeks you're going to make it and then you'll be there and then you will succeed. Why? Because you went. But if you will say, no, my car cannot handle that way, no, it's too long, no, me, I'm too tired, no, and the gas, you don't have money for gas, so wait. So wait in the gas station until someone will ask you, do you need help, and then go. Fill your tank, tank and go. I once wanted to help a friend of mine. I told that story many times because it's very inspiring. One time I wanted to save a friend of mine from, from, from the hell of, of his lust and desires. When I started to do my tshuva, before of that, when we were secular, we were best friends ever. We loved each other so much, we were so connected. And when I started to do tshuva, I was sure that he's coming with me. And Hashem wanted that, like that, that we separated. He didn't want it. He went in a different way and I went to do tshuva. After years, I was always calling him again and again, but it wasn't so-so. We, we couldn't connect and, and, and communicate so well. But after a few years, in one of our conversations, I felt that that person is finished. Like, I didn't know how to save him. And I loved him so much, I really wanted to save him. And in one of the nights, I said to my wife, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm driving from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. He lived in Tel Aviv. I told her, I'm, I'm going to, to him, I'm going to knock at his door. So she said, but you spoke with him, you told him. I told her, no, I, I, I feel I must go. She said, okay, but what are you going to do? We don't have uh, gas in the car, you don't have fuel, and we didn't have money. So I told her, I don't know, I'm going. I'll let you know what happened. And I'm going down the hill from my house to toward the highway from, to go out from the city. And I'm calling a friend of mine, a third person. I'm telling him, hey, listen, do you have 50 shekels? I need to, to put gas. He said, yes, where are you? I told him I'm going down the street, Rabbi Yosef Karo, and soon I'll be in Shmuel Anavi, a certain a sec, next street. He tells me, so finish the, the, the Rabbi Yosef Karo and stop. I'll be there in a minute. And the person is driving right now on Shmuel Anavi. I got to the intersection, he came out of the car. He went out of his car, he gave me 100 shekels, and he said, go. I'm sure you're going to do something important. And he doesn't know what I'm doing. And Hashem sent him. I called that person out of many, many friends that I had in those days. Today I almost don't have friends. But in those days I still had many friends. And he gave me 100 shekels and I went and I put gas and I'm coming to that person's house in Tel Aviv, the friend of mine, I knock at his door and he opened. And he was so surprised to see me, you can't believe, I won't tell you what he was in the middle of doing, but you can have your own thoughts on that. He was very surprised to see me. And I went in, just burst into his house, crashed on his sofa, hi, I'm here with my suit, with my beard, with my payas, sitting in the middle of his tiny bachelor's apartment in Tel Aviv, like the hell of Manhattan of today, into his darkness. And I spoke with him for at least two hours, with him and with another friend that was there, arguing, talking, whatever. Today that person, and only because of that night, and he will testify, because it was a life-changing for him, we're talking about a married person living religious orthodox life with two children. They have shalom bayit, he's working, he's got parnasah. He was learning in yeshiva for two years. He was doing much, many things in Kiruv. He was volunteering in, a, in an organization. Did amazing stuff with his life. And why? Because I was crazy enough to throw myself into the darkness, into the unknown, and not knowing what I'm about to do and what I'm supposed to do. But I went after my heart because my heart was calling me and it saved the life of that family. 
in the day that he and his wife, after they went and like they met in Shiduchim and everything, and they found each other, and they were sitting in, on a bench in Park Hayalkon, in a park in Tel Aviv, and talking to each other and saying, and he, uh, 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 how do you say, he offered her to marry him, proposed. proposed. He proposed to her, and she said yes, and they were so excited and happy, and they said to each other, we must tell someone. And they didn't have no one to call, like most of Bala Tshuva don't have no one to share their happiness with. So they decided, sitting on that bench, okay, the first person that we will see, we're going and telling him who they met, my mother. She's walking in Pankayarkon in the middle of the night, randomly. And he is a friend of mine from childhood. He's going and he sees my mother. And he's realizing that something unique, a miracle is happening to him. And he tells his wife, future wife, it's Dwar's mother. You, like, you can't believe it. And he saw, and now we all can see, the power of your will, of your heart. Hashem will show you how powerful and how great was your success. When you worked with closed eyes, with lack of knowledge, don't understand what you're doing, making another step, following your own heart, that's your real connection to the Creator. And the Creator will prove it to you. It's on Him to show you the miracles and to bring you to your success. You don't have the mission to succeed. You have only the mission to try, to do the best that you can. So for that you must be connected to who that you are. And with that, we're going to finish our class of today. Thank you very much. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.